Hey guys, it is July 6th, Monday, and I figured it's been a little while since we did our little garden tour. Um, so, and we added a new bed since our last tour. So I think this week what I'm gonna do is start on our tomato side um, and then work our way down to the new bed because this is how we planted them. We plant started with the tomato bed first and then kept adding and adding and adding and adding and now we have five beds. Here you can see them behind me. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There we go. Five beds and we still have plans. Where is it? Along this fence to do um, more. We're going to do a full wall of beds over there and then along this fence right here we're also going to do another bed next year probably get it ready I'd say in the fall after like the heat's the heat kind of goes away this year we'll start um, building those beds so that it's ready for some fall planting um, but yeah let's start um, first of all I you probably met our sweet chicken in our first introductory video but here's our sweet girl Ruby Dubes hey Rubes and that's our compost um, bin as of right now although we're gonna need another one and doesn't every farm garden have a scrap wood area I think so yeah it's just a sweet girl Rubes all right oh and you can see my big old hound dog through the fence. All right, so let's start on the end. So here are the triple crop, triple L crop tomatoes. Um, I don't know if like this video even does it justice because these are massive. Um, they haven't started blushing yet. I am very anxiously awaiting those. Um, we have two triple L crop plants. Um, and this one has multiple faceated blossoms that turned into uh, fused tomatoes that are cat face on the bottom. They're still edible. They're just not going to look as pretty. Oh, and we also had to add this chicken wire, which is unfortunate. But the chickens I have found absolutely love my tomato greens. So we're going to keep them out. All right, so next up... These are Aunt Ruby's German Green Tomatoes. Um, these are also quite large. Um, whoop. There's another one right behind it. It's kind of hard to see because they are close together and we have some um, back on the other plant back there. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and some smaller ones that are just now coming in. Uh, they are definitely not ripe yet. I, pro I check them pretty much every day, but I'm just feeling them. Uh, you just kind of squeeze them, and they're, right now they're really firm, so they are definitely not ready just yet, but keep touching them. I do think that when these triple L crops start blushing, it'll be about the same time that these will be ripe um, because they were planted about the same time, and they... Um, they're about the same size, so I have a feeling they'll, they'll have pretty similar um, maturity periods. Um, we have a ton of Lucky Tiger tomatoes from Baker Creek. Let's see. This is really hard to do, you guys, with all these <laughs> plants. Let's, there we go. Um, they're not turning any colors yet, and I am feeling them. They're softening up just a little bit, but still a bit firm. Um, I don't think they're quite ready yet. Um, I've tried to look up, I've never grown these before, um, so I looked up online to try and figure out um, what they should look like when they are ripe. Um, and some show them as green, some show them as yellow, some have like a pink blush to them. So I'm gonna give them a little bit longer and see, um, see. Because, I don't know, they're just a little bit too firm right now. These, these ones are actually, are, the big ones are getting a little softer. But they don't feel like they want to give off the plant. So, to me, that leads me to believe that they're not quite ready yet. Oh, and I just found a friend. 
Um, let me see how I can do this. Let me flip you around. Nope, I can't do that. Uh, let's see. Can you see that spider? Those zigzags? I honestly don't know what that is, so I am going to look it up, but spiders are your friend in the garden. So we're going to leave her there. All right, so I have four of the Lucky Tiger tomato plants, and all four look about the same. One of them is a little bit smaller only because it was um, plant planted with another Lucky Tiger plant when I started them. They were together, um, and they they just kind of, I, I let them go too long together, and so it kind of scented, scented its growth just a tad. Let me... Let me see if Rubes wants to come hang out with us for our garden tour. Hey, sweet girl. There you go. Hey, what's up, babes? All right, so the next one that we have are our sweetie tomatoes, which we've already actually started eating. And these are actually really pretty. They grow in these like really pretty rows like this. And as they turn, or as they ripen, I should say, they turn colors from the inside um, inside tomatoes out. So let me see. Sorry, Rubes, am I driving you crazy? Yeah. Um, there you go. So from the inside, we've already harvested these guys, um, but they're, I don't know, it's just pretty. It's om like a little ombre. Here's one that we haven't started touching yet, um, and it just started turning yesterday. There you go, Mama. You can get off. You don't want to get off? There we go. Um, we also have four of these, and they are blooming like crazy. Like, uh, it's, it's definitely harder to see when the tomatoes are all green, but we have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of these. So we're gonna have quite a few uh, of these sweetie tomatoes here shortly. Um, my kids eat them like candy. Um, so I have a feeling they will not last long out here. All right, so jalapenos. We're doing really good with jalapenos. These are not ready yet, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six actually growing on this plant. Let's see, this one has one, two, three, four on this one. And then this one has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. And actually, I'm gonna take this one inside because we are having tacos for dinner tonight. Oh, this one actually has more than six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven. I'm probably missing some too. And there's tons of blooms up here, tons. Uh, so I definitely think we are gonna be set on jalapenos. Ooh, it smells so good. Um, and then behind the jalapenos, these beautiful flowers in the background, it's Thai sweet basil. I really don't know what to cook with these yet so if you guys have a really good recipe that includes thai sweet basil please share it with me i want to use it i just don't know how best to use it um, lots of really lush green organic basil um, still comparing it to our store-bought basil these are definitely bushier um, i don't know it's a pretty big bush there's three of them here and they're very bushy. Yes, I'm pruning off of both of them, um, especially if they start to flower. I'm trying to catch that. But these seem to be definitely outproducing. Um, man, this purple opal basil is so pretty. Um, I honestly don't think that the video is going to do it justice, but it is gorgeous. Um, here's our little thyme plant. We actually have harvested off of it once so far. Um, I'm not remembering which recipe we needed it for, but oh, it smells so good. All right, and then this is, uh, oh, our Greek oregano. I think I told someone German oregano. I don't know what I was thinking. 
So this is Greek oregano, uh, and we also used this on that same recipe, whatever recipe that was. Also smells amazing. Uh, and so last time I showed you this Tabasco pepper plant, um, it doesn't look very different, but what's exciting is that it had a, this little seedling in it, um, and it looked pretty sad, honestly. Um, all the leaves had come off of it, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna see what we can do. And that's a pretty healthy little seedling. So we'll see if that lasts. Uh oh, I see a chicken treat in my flowers. You guys, the best thing about having chickens are you can give them your garden friends. I found two caterpillars and that is a chicken treat. So let's go give these to Ruby. Ruby tubes! Where are you, Mama? Where'd you go? Uh oh. We gotta find her. It's pretty humid today, so she might be resting. Oh, no, you're hiding under the chair. I'll show you the coop in a second. We painted it this weekend, did um, some work. But here, let's let Ruby have these. Yummy. Yeah, you eat that. Don't let it eat my plants. So good. So good. Here's another one. Get it. Get it. Yeah, eat that. Those are actually her second and third caterpillars today. I found a few. We were in the clear for a little while. We hadn't had any where we're picking them out pretty regularly. But I've been noticing that particularly my okra plants are getting chewed up. So um, if you saw our last garden tour video, you would see this, or you would remember, this is our um, romaine lettuce. It was just like a salad mix blend. Um, I let it bolt and go to seed. Um, it did start to flower the other day. A couple of these opened, um, but they look like they're pretty much closed up now. Yeah, you can kind of see a few of them had already opened. Um, so now I'm just waiting for it to dry up and I'm going to collect the seeds from it. We'll have a lot of basil, or uh, basil seeds. I'm looking at the basil. A lot of romaine seeds, so pretty pretty exciting. This is my first time seed saving, so I definitely have a lot to learn. Um, tiny little rosemary plant. Started that from seed, so it's doing pretty good. Uh, we lost two rosemary plants already this year, so I'm really hoping that one will pull through. This is our little <laughs> okra forest. They looked, when I, I was one plant from the garden center, and a lot of these looked pretty sickly, but they're actually doing all right at the moment. Um, and if that's the case, these are definitely planted too close together. So I'm going to have to kind of move some around or just decide to lose a couple. Um, like this sad one, let's see, right here. And then maybe this guy um, might need to pull those out and just count it as a loss. Um, we've gotten a lot of rain this month already, even though we're only on day six of July, we've gotten a ton of rain. I don't even remember the last time I've actually watered my garden. Um, so I think some of my plants are actually overwatered right now. So if you see some yellow yellowing on the leaves, that is definitely what's going on. Uh, lavender plants, they lost their flowers, regrew some flowers, and they seem to have lost them again. I do think, again, it's the rain because um, they have been fertilized and oh look I found another garden treat for my cheeky chick yeah little stinker Ruby look come here yummy it's right there get it yeah okay um, again if you saw my last garden tour video these are all tomato plants that were actually extras. Um, so when I started the seeds, started a few extras in the same containers. And we had, 
I'm pretty sure we had a, almost 100% germination rate this year. Everything grew really, really well. This one's getting a little too heavy for this tomato cage and it's fallen over. Um, so I don't even honestly remember which are which. I do think these are sweetie tomatoes. Um, and then these are just because of the shape, the lucky tiger tomatoes. Um, my pumpkin plant is growing so much that I'm trying to guide it out into the grass. Um, and my pumpkin is doing really well in there getting big. It actually has a slight orangey hue to it, so it's definitely growing. Um, but like some of these plants, I really don't know what they are. This does not look quite the same shape as the Lucky Tiger tomato, so that's a big question mark for me. And this one is some sort of multiflora variety, but I, again, I just don't know what these are. Although this shape looks a lot like this shape, so, I don't know. If you guys know what these are, look at these unusually shaped. They're oblong. They almost look like um, uh, like a butternut squash shape. So if you know what they are, let me know. Um, cucumbers are doing very well. Let's see. You can see two of the plants are, have grown almost to the top. Um, my little late start guy is getting there. That from what I've been told, they start off pretty small and then they shoot up. So we've already picked, I'd say, five or six um, cucumbers off of this guy. And, well, both of these two plants. Um, and look, I have one that is ready to pick right now. So we'll go ahead and take that inside. And I have one waiting for my last harvest that we will make some pickles or put it on a salad. So those are all the second tomato bed. So that's garden beds. Let's see, one was the tomato plants back there. Two was the basil, herbs, okra, jalapenos. Three is leftover tomatoes and pumpkins um, and the cucumbers, obviously. And then go on the other side of the arch, we have our melons. Um, these are finally getting long enough where they're reaching up. So I'm trying to train them to go um, up the trellis so I think by the next garden tour video we should have some pretty good trellising going on and pretty pretty good climbing I should say so there well, somehow I'm gonna get that one up I might need to tie it we did try to grow some radishes. The germination rate was terrible, and we also had a lot, a lot of rain right after we planted them. A couple are growing up. I'm just gonna see what happens at this point. Just, uh, why not? Okay, oh, there's my dog being adorable back there. Hey, Flint, Flinter man. Flint, who's a good boy? Um, let's see, here's our little lunchbox to me, or, uh, tomatoes peppers there's a couple little ones down there we have picked one off prematurely um i think it was like two or three days ago uh and just tried it just to try it because it fell off um it was definitely not ready um, my son said it was gross because it wasn't sweet at all like he likes for his um, peppers but we put it in the compost so it didn't have it wasn't wasted. That's what I'm trying to say. It wasn't just wasted. Okay, so next are the watermelon plants, which have started to sprout out. And I'm actually going to train, hopefully, I'm hoping to train this one to come out this way. And I'm just going to let it take over this side because we don't have anything growing over here. So the pumpkin is going out onto this walkway on this side of the other bed. And then I'm going to shoot these ones this way. That's my goal, at least. Uh, let's see more bell peppers and corn. We definitely have lost one of our corn. Last time it was actually this one that was struggling on the last video and now this is our strongest corn and now it is this little squat thing that I don't think there's any hope for it honestly. Uh, here are our bell peppers. These are just like a lunchbox bell pepper according to the packet and these ones should turn orange. Um, and I've been kind of picking off these dead 
uh, leaves, I think because they're getting sunburnt. But I also know that if you don't keep your peppers covered, they can get sunburnt. So I'm trying not to pick off too, too many. Um, but I also don't want to introduce disease into the plant. So I'm tr trying to keep keep a, a, the healthy leaves on and pick off some of the sadder ones. Um, let's see. And then this is our last bed that we just added. We did sow seeds in these blank spots but our, our flock got ravaged uh, last weekend, so the animal that ravaged them climbed all over this bed. So I honestly don't know if whatever was planted here is gonna survive. I think we did a um, sugar snap pea along the edge and Brussels sprouts maybe right after it. I'll have to look at my little guide. But these are a bush bean that had already, I had started from sprouts. I think I had them in the tray on the last video and they're doing really well. Um, although they look like I have a little bit of pest damage. Um, these are zucchini squash and then these are just like a, a simple yellow crookneck squash. And then we planted three different kinds of carrots on this end, but I'm not sure with all the rain and everything if those will actually come up. Um, we may have to wait and re sow here in a couple of weeks. Um, but, I mean, otherwise, this is a pretty good looking garden. I could already picture it though, because we still have space. Okay, let me find the best angle for you all. So, we still have this is the last bed. We still have space for another one here. And then, all the way back. We're gonna leave some space in the back, but from this edge of the, the garden to the back where the chicken, almost to where the chicken coop is, is about 65 feet worth of grow space. And then we're actually, when we pull everything out this summer, we're gonna move these beds over just maybe like a foot or two. And that'll allow this area to be able to grow at least I'd say a two foot bed so that I can do a pollinator garden along the fence over here. Um, I'm more so doing the pollinator garden because I have never been a flower gardener and I want to learn. Um, but we actually have plenty of pollinators. I have a ton of dragonflies in my garden. Um, I've had this one butterfly that keeps visiting our garden uh, landed on me three or four times yesterday. I'm actually looking at two different dragonflies right now. Um, in the morning, my pumpkin plant usually has tons of little bees buzzing all around it. Um, it's, it's, we've, got, we've got plenty of life in here. So that's, yeah, that's the garden. All right, so one, I'm gonna grab my jalapeno before I forget. I'm gonna do a quick sneak peek of the chicken coop. So this weekend I painted it all white. Um, we were doing, we we're trying to figure out if we wanted to do the the run. Um, we're gonna stay in our fence like a dark brown. I was trying to decide if I wanted to stay in the fence or paint it white. My husband was all for the white, and I actually it looks really good. Um, we unfortunately we had already put all of the mesh on before I started painting. So I'm going to actually paint the mesh white too, um, probably next weekend. Um, because I don't know, let's see, that looks super tacky to me at least. Um, and then I also painted the inside of the roof, the same color as the outside. So it's very consistent, nice and cool on there. Um, we do plan on adding some string lights and then Next year, we're actually moving this tomato bed um, away. This will probably be the end bed on this row. And we're going to make this a little seating area because my husband and I absolutely love to come out here and just sit with the chickens. So right now, here are our chairs. We just sit, watch the chickens, hang out, um, talk, drink our coffee, iced coffee, or have a glass of wine and a beer at the end of the night. Um, but... This is kind of like our new happy place, really. And the kids have been really good 
about letting us have this peace and quiet. Um, and since I mentioned that our flock getting ravaged, we actually had to go out and purchase some more chickens because right now Ruby is by herself. Um, she has a mirror in her uh, in the run and we move it actually into her coop at the end of the night. Let me see if you can see it. Yeah, there's the mirror um, So that she doesn't think she's alone uh, chickens really don't do well by themselves um, So we we actually come out here multiple times a day to check on her play with her pick her up um, interact with her and then uh, at least for an hour a day we bring the next two oldest chickens out here which are Let's see, we have one French black copper moran and then one French blue copper moran that we've been bringing out. Um, and we're just trying to introduce them. We kept them separated at first, um, and after a few days we let them out. Um, Ruby's having a hard time adjusting to them. She definitely wants to pick at them, which is unfortunate, but she's, she's adjusting, and we'll get there. I, I have faith that she will do well. She's a sweet, sweet, sweet chicken. I don't know if you can see her. Boop. She's a sweet girl. Um, she's just so unsure because she lost four of her brothers and sisters over the weekend. So, yep. So we have those two coming in that we've been introducing, and then we have four more that are, I'd say, about a week old. They still have a few weeks left in their brooder before they're going to come out here. We've we have actually brought them out couple or yesterday we brought them out for the first time we put them in this little thing and let the other chickens just kind of smell them check them out look at them listen to them but they are they're kind of getting used to each other still but yeah that's our garden oh you know what one more thing I'm sorry one more thing before we go um, I want to show you what my husband worked on this weekend so while I was doing all the painting Hey Rubes. <laughs> While I was doing all the painting, my husband was over here adding on an addition to our coop. Um, it's definitely not done yet. Uh, we have to figure out the mesh. I still have to paint this roof to match the rest of the roof and the walls to also be white. But we basically doubled our square footage by doing this addition. Um, since we went from having five chickens to seven, we wanted to make sure that there was plenty of space. So right now, so this, where this line is, is actually where the coop used to end. And now we have a whole another loft area, I guess you could say. Um, and we're going to add some roosting bars in here. Um, probably this weekend so that they can get used to roosting. We still have our um, nesting boxes covered because they are not at laying age yet. Even Ruby. She's only three months old maybe three and a half months old she's still still a sweet sweet little baby um although she looks like she's pretty big she's not quite ready to start laying yet so um she's got some time you following me you following me come on rubes <laughs> um well i think that's all i have for now Grab my cucumber, grab my jalapeno. Here's today's little harvest. We are going to harvest the cherry tomatoes that are ripe tonight um, because we're about to get more rain, unfortunately. So I want to get those before they get waterlogged. Um, but there's the garden. I uh, hope you enjoyed. We look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.